Hello and welcome to another Beast PC video. Recently, with Intel's mainstream consumer processors, they've been trying everything they can to hit all segments of the market. Starting with the 9th generation, they've started offering CPUs without their integrated graphics in the form of F models at a small discount, meaning they put a price on the GPU. Officially, they're about $30 cheaper, however, the difference in most retailers seems to be about $10 if they have both models in stock. Well, today we'll find out if there's any advantage to paying for the non-F model. Our CPU here is an Intel Core i5-9600K non-F that you've seen before on the channel. It features the UHD 630 graphics chip with 24 execution units and it uses system RAM as VRAM. The rest of the CPU is pretty familiar, we overclocked the 6 cores and 6 threads to 5.1 GHz. Now the Intel integrated graphics are constantly hated on, called useless, mocked, and memed about. This isn't really without reason since Intel really hasn't changed it much since 6th generation with the HD530 and these things are famously known to struggle with most games. Well, we're here today to see how far we can get. Since the VRAM is just shared system RAM, the faster the RAM is, the better the performance. So we've heavily overclocked our memory to 3733C16 with Titan subtimings, achieving 54,000 megabytes per second of throughput. For comparison, a budget GPU like a GTX 750 Ti has about 86,400 megabytes per second. Another performance boost would be to overclock the graphics. On my particular motherboard, the option in the BIOS doesn't seem to work for directly overclocking the graphics frequency, so we'll use Intel Extreme Tuning Utility instead, officially released by Intel. Stock, this thing does 1150 megahertz, and we got it up to 1300 with a small voltage bump. Any more voltage though wouldn't even give us another 50 megahertz stable. So how was the performance with the performance enhancements? Kicking off the games with GTA 5, at 720p low settings we actually managed a perfect 60fps average, not bad for lowly integrated graphics. Turning the resolution up to 1080p low still gave 35fps average, playable if you prefer the higher resolution. Moving along, Doom in Vulcan mode at 720p low gave 43fps average, a little low for a shooter game but still quite nice if you're just playing casually. Now to more demanding games, Far Cry 5 at 720p low it didn't work, we couldn't even get 30fps. So we're turning the resolution slider down to 0.5 so we're effectively playing at 360p and this did solve the issue. We could now get 41 FPS average. The frame rate might be playable but the resolution... Yeah, it's gonna be a little difficult. And we move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, we expected this not to work at all even with 800 by 600 in DX12 mode. 30 FPS is out of the question. What we didn't expect was for the computer to blue screen. Oh well, let's turn the RAM speed down to 3200C16 and turn off the GPU overclock and try some other things. Fortnite at 720p low and full resolution scaling ran at 48 FPS average without major stutters, which is pretty impressive. If you want more FPS, you could slide that resolution scale way down. If these results look similar to the Iris Pro 6200 graphics in the i5-5675C we took a look at before, you'd be right. While that thing features double the execution units and a decent L4 cache to accelerate the graphics, the FPS difference isn't huge in most games, notably GTA 5 and Doom. Why is the FPS so similar when the iris should be twice as fast on paper at the same frequency? Perhaps its graphics architecture is older and its IPC is lower, or that its EDRAM isn't quite as fast as our overclocked DDR4, and its DDR3 VRAM really can't keep up. 
If you want to know more about it, you can check out this video where we build a mini ITX machine with it. Let's take a look at one more thing, performance scaling with different RAM speeds and overclocks. For this, we'll use the CSGO benchmark map which is fairly precise. At 3733 MHz with a decent GPU overclock, the UHD 630 managed 72 FPS average at 1080p low. Then to simulate a more average use case, we turned the RAM frequency down to 3200C16 and turned off the GPU overclock. The RAM bandwidth and GPU clock each dropped about 12%, and our FPS dropped 14% to 62 FPS average. Then, to simulate somebody with a locked CPU and motherboard, we turned the RAM down to 2666 MHz with auto timings. Our RAM bandwidth dropped heavily again, and the FPS took a small dip of 7% down to 58 FPS average. So applying a good overclock is pretty useful to extract about 25% more performance out of this thing. Still, we've determined that this thing is, frankly, quite bad at gaming. It's probably best used as a backup GPU for when your dedicated GPU fails, or to use this as an office PC. But wait, Intel graphics do feature one cool niche feature called QuickSync. It's a powerful video encoder that helps us, for example, hear in Handbrake when converting a video to MP4. The graphics using QuickSync converted our video in 19 seconds, meanwhile, just using the CPU, it took 33 seconds. So by using integrated graphics here, we were able to cut 40% off our video transcoding times, which is better, for example, than an RX 560, which only cut the transcoding times by 30%. So conclusion time, how bad are Intel's graphics really? Well, we've determined that with enhanced performance, it does pretty well in light titles. It's really not bad for movies or office use, and it can even play a few games here and there. It even accelerates content creation. But of course, it's not good at all for gamers. But keep in mind, most people don't use their computer to play games. A lot of CPUs like the i5-9500 find their way into office pre-builds, where the UHD 630 feels right at home. So Intel's idea of increasing profits while cutting costs for the consumer with the F-Series is pretty smart. They now have products that appeal to both casual users and gamers. And since the price difference between F and non-F CPUs seems to be no more than $20, I'd say this is honestly the best $20 GPU you can buy. However, if you actually need a new CPU plus GPU combo, just get an Athlon 3000G instead. Its graphics at stock perform similarly, but it overclocks way better and the price is cheaper if you ever just need an office PC or a super light gaming PC. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and please consider subscribing. See you next time.